Now let's take a look at the three string partial capo. So a partial capo performs a kind of magic trick on your guitar. You sound like you're in an alternate tuning, but you're not. You're still in standard tuning. Uh, partial capos accomplish this by holding down some strings and leaving others untouched. So they change the intervals between open strings, which is what would happen if you were using an alternate tuning. In a lesson in Beyond Strumming, I introduced the five string partial capo which uh, gives you a setup similar to drop D tuning if you place the capo at the second fret covering the top five strings. But in this lesson, we're gonna explore the three string capo, which is designed to hold down strings three to five or strings two to four. The most common use of a three string capo is on strings three to five at the second fret. The capo is essentially holding down an E sus four chord. Um, when you got the capo in that position, the intervals between the open strings are the same as in dadgad tuning, but up a step. So the pitches are E, B, E, A, B, E. Uh, so the capo gives you something like instant dadgad tuning while your strings are physically still in standard tuning. In this lesson, we're gonna focus mostly on this use of the three string capo, that dadgad or ESUS partial capo position, um, looking at some chord shapes and then trying them out in short progressions. But we will also flip the capo around to uh, cover strings two to four at the second fret. So it's holding down an A major shape. You will need a special capo to play these examples. Uh, fortunately, three string capos are readily available and uh, not a big investment. So uh, here's mine, which is a Shub C7B. Um, and uh, there also are three string models from uh, Kaiser, the Shortcut, uh, Diderio Planet Waves, uh, Artist Dadgad. Uh, there's a Newport uh, G7th um, three string model. There are other options out there. Uh, the purchase is well worth it for uh, cracking open a whole new candy box of sounds on your guitar. So first, uh, put your partial capo in place on strings three to five at the second fret. You may find that you need to tweak your tuning uh, a little after adding the capo. I do find that a partial capo tends to knock out the tuning just a little bit. But uh, check and make sure you've got your hands-free E sus chord and all those octaves sounding good. So um, first let's check out some D chord shapes. So note that uh, I am naming chord shapes in relation to the capo. So a D shape, what I'm calling a D shape, actually sounds as an E. So first, this is a D5, a one finger chord. If I add in first string, I get a D major. There's a D minor. Another D major. If I lower that fourth string of fret, I get a D minor. Here's a D7. Another D7 fretted just third string, five frets above the capo. Here's a voicing I love. It's a D add four. So fretted with just one string, fourth string, four frets up from the capo. Now let's check out some G voicing. So first of all, there's a G chord. Probably looks and sound familiar because I'm actually fretting the strings that might ring open uh, uncapoed. So just getting my standard tuning sound. However, I could leave that first string open. I could leave the second string open as well. And then I get a G add nine. This is a G add nine too. 
like a G bar chord without the bar, leaving the top strings open. If I leave the third string open, I get a G add nine. And if I leave the fourth string open, same. G add nine. And this is a G minor, where I'm muting the fifth string. Now to some A shapes. This is A add four. With the top two strings open, it's an A sus four. A eleven. A regular A minor shape will give minor, add four, and A minor, 11, and also start moving up the neck, that's an A, add four, also an A, add four. I open up the third string on that sh on that uh, shape. I get an A eleven. A few more shapes, uh, starting with a C. C add nine. If I Play a C7 shape with that open first string in there. I get a C9. Now the E chord shapes presents a wrinkle. Um, if you want a low root, you have to fret the sixth string alongside the capo. So you need to get your finger in there next to the capo. So to accomplish that, you may need to scoot your capo back from the fret a little further than you might ordinarily place it. So try to find the sweet spot that's just far enough from the fret so you have a little space to slip your uh, index finger in there and fret the sixth string. But you don't want the capo so far from the fret that uh, it buzzes or sounds dull. So um, Doing this uh, shapes fretting beside the capo uh, may feel awkward at first, but it gets easier with practice. So this is an E11. That's I'm holding down the regular E shape with my middle ring and pinky fingers, and then I am grabbing that bass note with my index next to the capo. Now if I were to Leave the fourth string open. That's still an E11. This would be an E minor 11. And just a few more shapes. This is a B minor 7. An F6, and a B flat major 7. All those shapes using the ringing strings on top. Bear in mind that you can transpose all of these uh, chord shapes by using a regular capo plus a partial capo. Uh, so, for instance, uh, if I were to put my regular capo at the third fret there, and then two frets higher than that, use my partial capo. Now, if I'm playing D shapes, uh, they're sounding in the key of G. One, two, three, four. 